Uh, good morning from my side, but also uh, good afternoon, good evening from wherever you, you're joining right now and watching. I'm really happy to uh, welcome you to this SAP community call. My name is Minina Chow. I am an SAP community advocate, and that means, yeah, I want to encourage you to really lively participate, um, ask questions in the chat, um, and interact with, with our experts. The topic for today is uh, green token. So how you can really have an end-to-end -end traceability um, to increase sustainability. And uh, we have, I think, the best experts here with us that can talk about this topic. So with me is uh, Gloria Figueroa. Um, she is product consultant uh, for Green Token by SAP. And we have James Veal. He is um, co-founder co and head of uh, Green Token by SAP. I think, yeah, best experts that can uh, talk more about this topic in detail. With that, I think uh, we're good to get started with the presentation. We don't want to uh, take too much time. Um, so we have enough actually for, for Q&A. And really, by no means, you're really welcome to ask questions anytime during the presentation. I'll, I'll keep an eye out. Um, and, and let Gloria and James know so we can really address them live. With that, handing over to you guys. Super, thank you very much. And uh, both Gloria and I are most welcome to be here uh, today. So look, we want to tell you a little bit about Green Token, a little bit about why we started this venture within SAP, a little bit about the problem we're trying to solve and why we think current solutions don't solve them. Um, and then uh, dive a little bit into um, actually how the solution works and some of the use cases that we have. Uh, so with that, we'll move to the first slide. And we'll, we'll, just, we'll just talk a little bit now about the challenge and the opportunity we have here. So what we found during our research before we started Green Token was that for, for manufactured goods, that for goods that are made, goods that come from factories, goods that go into uh, shops and, a re and services that are retails, there's pretty good traceability. You look at any consumer good food item uh, and you can see pretty much where it's made. There's a barcode on it. You know, there's a good story there, you know, from the consumer product company all the way to you. You've got a lot of traceability. But what is missing is the is that traceability the raw materials, the, the ingredients that go into that uh, product. Um, they tend to be traded like commodities. They tend to be traded on quality and price. And you lose a huge amount of information about those raw materials. And that leads you to these, these blind spots. So blind spots that you see here, you know, we just by using raw materials without having concern for the environment, we see this massive biodiversity loss uh, we see uh, people living in uh, strained conditions, you know, uh, with high uh, levels of uh, pollution. And even though it's amazing in this day and age, there's still there's still huge amounts of uh, modern slavery happening again in the raw materials at the cheaper ends of the market, where to make the prices low, uh, people are working in unethical uh, conditions. But we also believe at Green Token that this leads to opportunities. If we can prove that these raw materials supply chains are ethical, child labor free, good for the environments, uh, that products are being designed and made with circularity in them, that's saying they're using waste as some of the inputs. Uh, we know that society as a whole want to buy those kind of products. So there's a real opportunity uh, if you're a manufacturer or, or a, a, a retailer and you can sell products with this great story behind them that, uh, that they're good for the environment, they're, they're good for the health of the planet, they're good for the workers uh, who make them. And our research there says, you know, we know more than 80%, uh, more than four and five millennials uh, are motivated and committed uh, if they work for an employer that has that as one of their, their core KPIs. Um, and also we're finding now uh, a lot of our SAP uh, uh, customers that we um, service, uh, if you look at their annual reports, they all talk about 
ESG uh, KPIs and being better, more sustainable uh, companies, only sourcing uh, ethically, uh, making sure there's equal opportunities, uh, making sure they aren't doing anything to encourage poor practices. So yes, there are blind spots in the raw material supply chain. There's also great opportunities if you can prove that you're doing the right thing. So, uh, so uh, back in 2018, uh, myself and my co-founder, Nathan James, started to uh, investigate this problem. And again, we're looking at the raw material side of things. Uh, and we, we actually found some amazing insights in there. Uh, the, the first one I think is very interesting. You know, more than 65%, so almost two thirds of procurement leaders don't know who their suppliers suppliers are so they, they they know who they buy raw materials from but they don't know where those suppliers got them from and and, and therefore that they they actually have don't have that story they they can't say you know they, they might someone might, might say oh this is this is an agri crop soybean palm oil that doesn't lead to deforestation but you're going on the trust of that supplier you have no real evidence and especially if the supplier, the wholesaler who's sending it to you says, I don't know where it's from, but it's the right spec and the right price for you. Um, and that leads your company to a lot of risk. You know, there could be risk of non-compliance with local legislations. You know, we, we've seen a new German supply law come in uh, this year where big German companies have to prove that they're not causing deforestation uh, in their activities. Uh, we know from before that this could put off your customers. We know that it could have a negative effect on your brands. It might make your products less desirable than uh, others. And, and currently we also found that um, today's systems based on ELPs like SAP uh, use batches to track materials through. And, and again, that's a really good idea for when you're in the factory and you're going to the end customer and you know, you're making a um, 100 garments in one go, you're making uh, a 1,000 consumer products in one go. Batch traceability is really good and really good for doing things like recall if something is wrong. But when you look at raw materials, they tend to trade and ship in bulk. They tend to get mixed together and co-mingled uh, together. And we proved time and time again that the, the rigors of batch don't work for that co-mingled, continuous flow raw material uh, that ships in bulk at mass. So if you move on. So that, that led us to our vision statement. So we, we want to look at what we call the upstream, that, that, that very first point from where materials are are, are originated, they could be grown uh, in plantations, they could be mines uh, in, in mines, they could come from uh, oil wells, but that very first uh, origination, we want to give accountability and transparency all the way up to, I, I would say the midstream where people start to use the semi-finished raw materials. Um, and we think that's part of the market that's been very well underserved. Um, we have a great solution for this. So uh, let's just have a quick chat about what Green Token is. Uh, so firstly, we're a cloud-based supply chain, and that's important. We, we've done uh, supply chain use cases where we're going into places like Malaysia and Indonesia, where 80% of the world's palm oil comes from. You know, you can't expect uh, to be uh, installed infrastructure there in terms of uh, big SAP ERP systems. What we have found in these countries is that access to the internet is, is really good. Uh, so our solution is based on that cloud access to capture that, that first point of uh, origination. Uh, we use three ideas, uh, three key ideas. The first one, which is why we call ourselves Green Token, is we create a digital twin of a very small quantity of the underlying raw material as a token. So for example, if I'm shipping uh, a, a thousand tons of palm oil, uh, I, I might make one token equal one kilo of palm. And that token, that green token becomes the evidence of where that material uh, was originally originated from. Uh, the next thing we do is we track that token all the way through the supply chain. 
And in order to build what we call a chain of custody, uh, every time that token moves, so every time the physical uh, raw material moves, we move the token on the blockchain ledger. Uh, and this blockchain ledger is great. It, it gives us a number of advantages. Firstly, as you say, uh, a ledger is just a sequential list of the movements. So we build up the whole history of where it's been. Uh, secondly, the ledger, the blockchain is a, is a distributed uh, database that there's no one actor has control of it. Uh, so it means the data can be trusted. No one person can go in there and say, oh, this non-sustainable crop is now sustainable. The updates need to be done on consensus. So it puts trust against parties who aren't trusted. And uh, the final thing it does, it, it eliminates double counting. We saw when we did, we did our research that with paper-based certification, you could have the certificate saying that this is, um, uh, this is a sustainable product, um, but I could give that certificate out a number of times. And providing people I give it to don't know each other, they won't know until much later that th those records have been double counted. You just can't do that with a blockchain. So it turned out to be the ideal way to give trust to the data within our uh, system. And the third idea is quite a simple idea. It's called mass balance. Uh, mass balance accounts, and we use it every day in our own personal bank accounts. All it says is that in, a, in any system, all the, all the outputs, or sorry, all the inputs into a system must be accounted for in the outputs uh, and any uh, waste or byproducts that happen during uh, processing. And think of it, think of your, your bank account. You know, you have a balance at the beginning of the month, you get paid, your balance goes up uh, and you spend uh, money. At the end of the month, you can account for uh, the current balance in your accounts. It was your start balance plus your income, less your uh, outgoings. And mass balance in Green Token works th the same way. Uh, so we also found when we put this together that there's a number, number of nice things that uh, uh, dropped out. Uh, firstly, um, a lot of these uh, supply chains are conforming to standards, uh, and a couple of standards that we've we've really got closer to are things like ISCC uh, and Red Certs. Uh, they're both used in uh, proving that materials are circular, uh, and because we also track the supply chain across the network, we know where goods move from or we, we know where they move from and to and therefore we can have a really good estimate on scope three carbon emissions remember uh, scope one and two are primarily the carbon emissions from manufacturing and power usage scope three is when you move a product uh, along the supply chain and that hasn't been particularly well done because products move in batches and a mass and it's very hard to account you know, to each product, the carbon footprint, we can put that little, um, little, because we're looking at a tiny part of the material supply chain, the digital twin on the token, we can write a tiny footprint and then sum it up at scale when we get to the um, final product. And then just a little bit about us. So um, Nitin and I pitched this idea back in 2019. SAP has a venture arm called SAP IO. Uh, they've made three, 400 investments in external companies, like every big uh, information company. Um, four or five years ago, they decided to allow open this program up to anybody in the company. Happily, we were the finalists and winners in 2019. We started our company in 2020. Uh, we now have 20 staff all across the world. Um, and we currently have a version of the software that we're trialing. Uh, and that we can sell uh, now. Um, and, and we'll talk about a bit later about some of the projects we've done, you know, one being with Eastman Chemicals, uh, a major US chemical brand who've invested really well and hard in uh, circular materials. So proving that their new plastic products that they uh, supply to their customers has really high percentage of recycled plastic, old recycled plastic uh, within them. And you can't sell the products apart. They look identical, but Green Token's proving where that recycled content has come from. Um, and their customers are very excited because that means they're conforming to their ESG promises. So next slide. So I think I, I, talked, I talked briefly about how it works. 
Um, as I, I said before, this is more of a deeper dive about the mass balance, the tokenization, and the, the, the blockchain. And it's an important principle. And I'll just, I'll just go through it once more before I hand over to uh, Gloria. So here I have uh, three materials, uh, A, B, and C, or rather three sources of the same uh, material. And it could be something like a, a deforestation uh, product. So one of these cash crops like coffee, sugar, cocoa, soya, palm, um, that is linked to deforestation. And clearly we can't afford to lose any more forests within uh, the world. But also clearly, you know, we need to make maximum use of uh, the current uh, agri crops and plantations that we have uh, out there. So let, let's say the green bee is from a source which is certified sustainable, um, doesn't lead to deforestation. C is something in the middle. It could be it's from a sustainable source, but there's questions over child labor or unethical labor within the supply chain. And A, we have no information on, and we mark that as a uh, suspect. Uh, so what we do, there's always a point in raw materials because they ship in bulk of, uh, we call it the first point of aggregation. Uh, for palm oil, uh, they come to a, a factory, the fruit, the palm fruits and the trees come to a factory where they're going to be crushed into oil. And what happens, you know, uh, small loads from thousands of farmers get all mixed together. Now, some of those farmers are certified sustainable, some are not. And that's the problem here. We suddenly when you mix them together at mass in the crush mill you lose that identity you lose that you know if i if any if i track b all the way through the the the, the three tons of fruit from this farm all the way through to my end end products i could be absolutely sure uh that it's from a good source but because i ha i have to mix them there's no way i can do it at scale without mixing i, I can't just crush three tons i need to crush thousands of, of, of tons so this is this is where our blockchain really starts to, to work. We we give a token for each small quantity, say each kilo, and then you know just by looking at any point in the supply chain, we know the ratio of A to B to C literally by counting the tokens. At every point, we'll have the same number of, of tokens for the same number of mass uh, within each of the supply chain. And then, as I said before, as we move the material down the supply chain. Uh, from uh, commingling and processing, from refining. Uh, you know, if I, if I move, uh, uh, I crush the fruits oil. If I move 500 tons of oil, I move 500 tons equivalents uh, with the different colored tokens represented upon it. And then at the end, I actually get to make a product. And so here I'm making a product, a t-shirt, a plastic bottle, some consumer uh, products. And I can show with absolute certainty uh, the percentage of, uh, of A to B to C, to good, to bad, to uh, indifferent. And what we found by having, being able to expose explicitly this measurement, it actually drives a virtuous circle. If you can actually prove that your products uh, are better for the environment and that the products that consumers want to buy, then there's a natural encouragement to go for more of the green uh, we can get higher premiums for the green and then our processes, our, our buyers can seek out more of the green. So over a, a time, a green token becomes an, an enabler, that measurement becomes an enabler to not source from A and then to actually go ahead and do from better uh, sources. That's a really uh, high level overview. And I want to hand over to Gloria, who's going to talk about some of the benefits of using a green token. Gloria. Yes, thank you so much, James. So let's take this concept and apply it to more specific use case. So we'll be talking about chemical recycling for plastics and basically talking about how green token can be leveraged to prove that plastics have been produced in a circular manner for, from plastic waste, for example. So for that, we want to start with the challenge. So looking at the baseline, we see different stakeholders that demand different things and are looking after different things in the supply chain, but these are very much interconnected. So what we're seeing is that end customers and end consumers, they are demanding more and more that products are made from sustainable materials. And very important to note as well, they're willing to pay a premium for, for this. And 
Research has shown that this premium can go up to 40% for uh, consumer product goods, which is a very significant premium to pay on top of the basic price. And we are also seeing that these customers and consumers, instead of just dem demanding that sustainable materials are being used, is that they also want to see the proof for it. If we look at the brand owners who are like the producing supply chain partners more at the downstream of the supply chain, we see that they want to increasingly use, well, in this case, recycle plastics in their final products. And they want to be able to make the claim for it, which also entails that it needs to be auditable and that they're after this premium that can be paid for their end product. And if we go a bit more upstream in the supply chain, more in the middle of the supply chain, we have these chemical recycling parties who produce pyrolysis oil, which is uh, oil made from plastic waste from different waste sources. And this also adds an additional layer, so to say, to the supply chain. And we'll get back to that in a second in the next slide as well. And lastly, uh, we overall see quite a long value chain from the plastic waste at the beginning of the supply chain all the way to the brand owner. So the challenge in this, and these points apply to most, if not all of the different parties in the supply chain, is that the different organizations, they want to know how they can best manage the mass balance and sustainability certification accounting. Furthermore, it's very important that the waste material at the beginning of the supply chain, so the plastic waste, is linked all the way to the final brand product. So they're looking for the best way to do this. And lastly, from all of this information that is then captured in the supply chain, organizations want to know how they can communicate this information in a credible and convincing way and so that they can share this transparency, not only with stakeholders such as the consumers, but also with uh, certifying bodies and auditors, for example. So going into the next slide, how would this work? So specifically for the use case of chemical recycling, as James already uh, mentioned previously, we would start at the first point of aggregation. And this is the point early in the supply chain where we have different types of waste streams, different types of raw materials coming together. So in this case, we would, for example, be looking at recycled plastics, plastic waste from, for example, post-consumer sources, recycled plastic waste from post-industrial sources. And it can also be that uh, on top of that, there's another feedstock being the conventional material. So in this case, we would be mixing that with virgin plastic materials from a conventional chemical feedstock. So as uh, these materials come together at this point of aggregation, we would create a digital twin in the form of a token in, green, uh, yeah, in the green token solution, representing the different materials that are being commingled. And this allows us to persist that visibility across the supply chain, even as these uh, materials are being commingled early in the supply chain, but also later on as these are being further processed and refined. And we can persist this all the way as the materials are being then, for example, allocated to the final product. And this results in this mass balance transparency over the entire supply chain. Very important to note, which uh, James explained previously as well, is that all of the information that we record in Green Token, um, we record via our blockchain, um, system so we ensure that there's high privacy of data and basically we have this um, this approach that every supply chain partner in the green token solution owns their own data and that way we ensure that also sensitive information is not shared with supply chain partners with whom you wouldn't like to share it for example so Seeing is believing, that's what we always say uh, at Green Token. So what we wanted to share with you is, and let me open the other screens as well, is some of the features that we offer today. 
So the first feature is this consumer application. And it's basically a way in which organizations can share the information that they captured in Green Token with the end customer or the end consumer. And we've developed this, uh, this consumer application with one of our very good partners, Eastman. Um, and there, there are different data points can be shown in, uh, in the consumer application. Like for example, you can add the ISCC plus certificate. So proving that, uh, that your supply chain is mass balance certified. Um, you can add the different ratios and the origin uh, of your raw materials and so on. And we have also created QR codes that go with the consumer application. So for example, a QR code could be uh, placed on your end product. So plastic bottle, for example, and by scanning that QR code, it takes you to the consumer application to see additional information of the materials. So in this case, for example, the circular materials that were, were in the uh, end product that you bought. So next thing we also wanted to share with you is the chain of custody. So as we have these different supply chain partners uh, recording their information on Green Token, you basically build this immutable end-to-end -end chain of custody across the chain. So let me switch my screens because I want to show to you in our live system. So to start with, uh, we have what we're showing right now is the system of uh, a supply chain partner at the end of the supply chain. So for example, a brand owner and this brand owner in particular is producing uh, bottles. So plastic bottles from uh, plastic waste, so from recycled plastics. And as this brand owner logs on into Green Token, this is what uh, the information that would be firstly communicated via the welcoming dashboard. So you would see the different materials that the supply chain participant works with and also the different mass balance ratios. Secondly, I wanted to show you this chain of custody. So as said, we have this supply chain partner, the brand owner who produces bottles at the end of the supply chain. And the chain of custody view basically shows us the buildup of the material flow and the information that was persisted across the supply chain over the different supply chain partners, so over the green token network. So as you can see here, we start with the plastic waste that has been collected all uh, the way at the beginning of the supply chain, how these have been further processed. So going from plastic waste to, uh, for example, plastic granules, and into, in this case, the lid blend and a bottle and all the way to the assembled bottle. And this is the graph view, but we also show it in a table view. So here we also see the different uh, multi facts that we were interested in persisting across the chain. So the plastic waste that was collected um, for that we recorded, for example, the type of categories so being post uh, industry recycled, post consumer recycled, and also the unique origin of the different materials. So these are the multi facts that were, were then recorded all the way in the beginning of the supply chain and persisted across the entire chain. So, as I said, uh, each supply chain partner controls their own data on green token and what we've also seen from experience, not all data um, is something that all supply chain partners would share. So in case of a more restricted view, we would also have the provenance uh, commodity overview, which I'm showing you here right now. And this is basically um, showing the, the minimum data points that we then persisted across the chain. So being the different uh, types of categories of the plastic waste and also the unique origins of the plastic waste that we collected all the way in the beginning of the chain. And this can be like the, the different data points that are shared can be yeah, flexibly configured depending on the needs and wishes of the supply chain, but also depending on uh, the data that each supply chain organization would like to share with their partners. So let me move back to the PowerPoint slide. So to summarize uh, our story here today, um, we wanted to go over some of the main uh, 
benefits that we have seen that our supply chain partners have experienced by using Green Token. So overall, by combining those unique principles of mass balance, tokenization, and the chain of custody for blockchain, we uh, have seen that Green Token is an enabler for increasing circularity and sustainability in the supply chain. Because by knowing your different types of uh, materials all the way to and the data related to that all the way to the origin you get a better view of where your supply chain stands today and this gives you also the handles to improve on that furthermore um, by also focusing on the different certification st standards and compliance and battling things like double counting we uh, also help organizations to reduce overall risks, not only related to certifications, but also downstream at the supply chain with their consumers, for example. Green Token is in essence a, a true network solution. And this basically creates different ways to collaborate with your so different supply chain partners. And also by adding this layer of blockchain, we help organizations that may have not already established a relationship with each other to still do business with each other and share information with each other in a trusted and reliable manner. Furthermore, uh, as we we've shown the consumer app, by sharing this information with, for example, then your end customers and consumers, you can increase your brand image. And overall, uh, what we've also experienced with, uh, with the different POCs that we've conducted so far is that uh, our supply chain partners, they have drastically uh, increased the efficiency of some of the processes that we they were performing manually before using Green Token. And lastly, um, also one, one very important point is that we help to enable this inter-organizational accountability so if you make this claim on sustainability we give you the proof to um, to do that and also to account for it towards your different types of stakeholders then already our last slide uh, to then also close um, our storyline for you today we wanted to share a little bit around the uh, engagement model so if you're interested in uh, Green Token, how, uh, how would we collaborate with each other? How would we collaborate with you and your supply chain? So overall, we uh, start with uh, proof of concept to validate the solution within your supply chain. And this usually takes between 30 and 90 days, depending on the use case and depending on the scope. And in that POC uh, process, we have overall five different phases. So we start with this exploration phase where we identify your use case and already set the high level parameters and scope of what we would like to represent in the proof of concept. Subsequent to that, we go into the discovery phase where we really finalize that scope and set our success criteria. So where do we want to be at the end of the proof of concept? What do we want to have proved by then? Uh, next, we go into the des design phase. And then we would have the green token team to configure the system based on the scope and the use case that we have identified. And um, we would also then deploy the network for you to access it and get this handover, exp uh, yeah, handover experience with green token. Next, we would have the delivery phase. So, um, then overall, it's an, a non-productive trial. So yeah, that, that's the scope of the proof of concept. And in the delivery phase, uh, you would basically make use of the green token system, validate it, also consolidate your, uh, your feedback. And we would see whether uh, we have achieved the success criteria that you have set at the beginning of, uh, of this process. And then lastly, uh, we would finalize the proof of concept and jointly uh, explore the next steps that we would perhaps like to go into. So this could be different use cases or taking it to the next level and looking at things like, for example, integration. 
And then I'll yeah. hand over to Menina. Yeah, thank you, Gloria. Uh, thanks, James, also for, for the presentation. Well, um, this slide shows you a few links that I also published in the, in the chat where you can follow up on Green Token um, with the community exchanging on this topic. James has published a blog post. Uh, we would love to hear your thoughts um, and of course, how you can get in touch with, with everyone. Yeah, let's jump right into Q&A. Um, I'd, have, I'd have a first question. Uh, maybe to start with. Uh, so how energy intensive um, is, is the blockchain? Yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's a great question. So we've all heard about Bitcoin uh, and Bitcoin, I believe, uses the same power as an entire country. Uh, Switzerland, Ireland, there's a couple of the countries that I've heard mentioned. Um, and, and let's just have a quick talk about what Bitcoin is. So Bitcoin is a blockchain. Uh, it's a public blockchain, and in order to write the records, write to the ledger, which is what you want to do to prove something, uh, Bitcoin makes you do a proof of work. And the proof of work is, holding a, is solving a really hard sum, a really hard algorithm. Basically, you have to find, find a factor. You, you have a number, you've got to divide it by something, you've got to um, it's a bit more complicated than that, but the answer has to start with a number of leading uh, zeros, and they keep making that factor hard. And look, you know, computers now are fantastically quick, and and there's billions upon billions of calculations to get this. But the the result of that is that a lot of energy, a lot of electrical energy, which you can transform into carbon footprints, uh, is expended in trying to solve this really hard sum so you can write to the, the, the chain. Now, there's another type of uh, blockchain. So that's a public uh, blockchain, these proof of work. We run something called a private uh, blockchain. It, um, it's actually a permissioned private uh, blockchain that doesn't use proof of work. It uses something called proof of authority. So what that means is all the members on the blockchain uh, give authority for the update to happen. So you still have consensus. Uh, so you still have this distributed nature uh, to get a, a new record on the blockchain, uh, but you're not having to expend this massive amount of electrical work, which could be uh, also could be, um, you know, carbon intensive. Uh, and to run our blockchain doesn't take any more than running a, any normal SAP. ERP uh, database, and what's more, uh, with our service provider, we've we've we put our services, our, our servers, uh, in places in the world where they can guarantee not 100% renewable power, really high percentage of uh, renewable power. Uh, doing this venture was so conscious of our own carbon footprint. We're doing everything we can to mitigate that and make it as small as as we can. That's great. To Sounds add good. to that. Uh, James, to make it more specific, it's 93% of uh, the energy oh, wow. for infrastructure that is uh, running on renewable energy. Well, that's good Fantastic. news. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so you, you, you had great examples and um, showed a use case. Uh, I'd like to know which industries uh, do you cover with um, or do you focus on with, green, with the green token? Uh, sure, yeah. So as Gloria said, um, look, the first thing is green token we found can really be applied to any, any uh, industry that has raw material inputs, physical raw material uh, inputs. Uh, the use cases we've run to date uh, are on circular plastics. Um, Gloria's worked on an amazing white paper with our, with our launch customers uh, that's coming out. When is that, Gloria? Soon, I hope. <laughs> Yeah, in two weeks. <laughs> so in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a, long, a white paper. We can't name the customers just yet. We're just getting the final permissions, but they're major US chemical companies, major European chemical uh, companies. And we worked on that circular use case. So they're all pushing to make these technical materials, these plastics. Uh, we, you know, we, we throw away, uh, Gloria has the stats, something like, is that over 90% of plastic gets burnt or buried. And, and that's ridiculous because they're wonderful resources there, wonderful resources of hydrocarbons. We can just reuse them there through chemical uh, recycling. So, so that circularity isn't just plastics. It, it can apply to end-of-life uh, 
uh, metals, a famous drink manufacturer we had a chat with the other day who want to recycle their, their drinks cans. Uh, so that's one space, proving circularity. Uh, another space is, you know, you see the lovely trees behind this is uh, no uh, deforestation cash crops. Uh, again, you know, I think I, we talked about why that's important uh, to us. Uh, we've done trials on that in palm oil, trials on that in soybean oil. So both of those are major contributors to deforestation. You know, if we can actually give a proper living wave, wage to non-deforested cash crops, that would be uh, important. Uh, and that applies to things like rubber as well. Rubber is interesting. Rubber comes from trees that can cause deforestation and rubber also has an end of life in car tires, tires where you can recycle it. So uh, that's a nice interaction of the two. And then it's pretty much anything you can think of. Another use case, which is really interesting at the moment is the switch to low carbon hydrogen. So that's making hydrogen from uh, electrolysis of water using renewable power. Um, I, I live in Australia, that's a big thing here. Uh, basically you're capturing and storing the energy from, from the sun and, and the wind to use at a later date. Uh, and we're proving that hydrogen really is made that way and not from uh, uh, other ways. So if you have, you have, if you have any use cases or, around those uh, subjects or anything, you know, anything with a raw material, you want to prove some facts against no child labor, no, no deforestation. Um, yeah, I think we'd be really interested to, uh, to talk to you. Great. Um, for, for the audience that maybe just joined late or would also like to know more on, on um, the technology, technolo technological <laughs> prerequisites <laughs> by, for using Green Token, what, what, what are these? Gloria? Sure. So um, we find it very important looking at the, uh, the various types of supply chains that we're working with and also the uh, different levels of supply chain partners that we're working with. And with that, I mean, for example, you see that many different supply chain partners, some may have a very mature technology stack, some may have a less mature technology stack, some may have no technology stack at all. So we find it very important that our system is as accessible as possible. And therefore, we offer basically three ways for organizations to interact with Green Token. For example, upload the data, uh, trigger transfers of tokens between um, the different parties. And uh, basically, that is via an open API. So we allow organizations to connect with any of their current in-house systems. We also offer a direct integration with ECC6 and SAP s hana and lastly, we also offer uh, organizations the possibility to upload their data via a CSV file. So regardless of yeah, where your supply chain partners find themselves, we allow them and enable them to interact with Green Token. Perfect. Really, really looking forward to, to more hearing from you guys. Uh, for now, a big thank you for taking the time and um, talking to the community about Green Token. It was really a pleasure having you here. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys soon. For everyone watching, also thank you uh, for attending. And uh, yeah, I hope you learned really something new. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Um, I posted the blog that, um, that James published. We really would like to hear what you think. Just follow up with us. With that. Have a good uh, rest of day. Take care, everyone. Hope to see you soon. And Thanks, yes. Marina. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Gloria. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> good. It's over then. It's life. over, yeah. <laughs>